of the new album that's coming out uh, September 30th, If the Sky Came Down. And uh, look, I've been a big fan of you guys for a while. I actually discovered you guys on your first album way back in the day. And uh, it's, it's interesting to see the the evolution of the band because you guys sound quite different now compared to what you were when you first started. Um, and this album's got a lot of variety as well, like a lot of melodic stuff and a lot of heavy stuff. What was the sort of um, the goal or the aim when you first went into writing and recording this new album? Well, you know, uh, for us, the thing is that ever since we started the band and ever since we've been writing music, which is, I was about 15 years old when I was writing the first record, you know, we've always felt like, because music is the only outlet that we know uh, in the world, you know, it's our way of getting all of our frustration out. It's all, all of our positive and negative thoughts. And for us, you know, we've always been a band that kind of, we hold and we wear our influences quite heavily on our sleeves. And, you know, back in the day, our musical influences, you know, they, they consisted of the classics. It was the Iron Maidens, your Judas Priests, your Children yeah. of Bodos, the Megadeths. Yeah. And that's what we, you know, that's what we mostly listened to. So I think it kind of made sense that when we started writing music, the stuff that came out was pretty fast, you know, very kind of mm -hmm. adrenaline soaked. And, and uh, you know, you had that kind of youthful angst and aggression and stuff. But as the years have gone by, you know, obviously I'd say that our musical horizons have also um, you know, varied a lot and it's opened up. And what we listen to nowadays is a mixture of all kinds of music. So to me, what we do right now and what we did with the previous record and even on the third record is very natural because I feel like everything we listen to, it would be kind of weird if we didn't bring it into our own music because, you know, let's face it, in 2022, I feel like most of everything has already been done. So I think the coolest things and the most personal and unique things usually come about when you kind of mix and match things that many people are like oh you can't do that but then we're like well why not <laughs> in a way because you know I, I felt like for the for the longest time there was a weird kind of paradox going on in the metal world where it's like we got into the whole style because the the message that was always brought to us was that you know what in this music style you can do whatever you want mm. but then at the same time there's a lot of these kind of different restrictions and boundaries it's like if you listen to this kind of music you're not allowed to fuck with this kind of yeah. music yeah. and for me i'm like you know in, in 20 years or in 30 years when i listen back to this music i want to feel like you know what yes i remember feeling that right there and i remember that record i remember i was listening to that we were doing that and I feel like we we don't want to put ourselves into one certain place and we don't want to dictate what we're going to be doing in 10 years by something that we did 10 years ago. Yeah. So for me, you know, Lost Society and If the Sky Came Down is what we're feeling, what we're observing and what we listen to in 2022. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head perfectly there where it's, it's, it's kind of weird how, you know, metalheads in general kind of like to go against the grain, so to speak, you know, against the trends. But then at the same time, they're like, you can't go outside the box that we've created for ourselves, you know? I think you're exactly right about that. We, we're sort of a little bit um, kind of conventional in that sort of sense. Exactly, exactly. And and like in a way, I, I understand where that, where it roots from, a, from, well, I won't say a problem, but it roots from something that's so human nature, which mm. is that something when there's a new thing coming that you're not familiar with it's always a bit terrifying in the beginning but i feel like it's up to bands to just kind of break that barrier and try it because you know you'll you'll always have like you'll have bands like slayer and acdc it's bands like that that essentially when you've created a whole genre i understand why your albums are going to follow the same theme it's mm. like i don't question why slayer didn't make a metalcore record you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. but but then when you have bands that are essentially like coming down from from um they're playing a style of music that has been perfected in some way very long ago so you can kind of take the you can take the route of doing what you do because you love it or you can also try out different things like the metallica route mm. and you know it's it's super funny because like with the new uh, the new singles out one comment that i read so much was oh like people were saying, oh, you did the Metallica thing. You sold out. You did the Black Album. And I'm like, how is the Black Album like a bad thing? In my opinion, it's the best Metallica record. Sometimes I'm very lonely with that opinion, but that's just me. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. I mean, I think, you know, for me, it's certainly a, a, a great thing when a band branches out like that. I mean, I'm a huge Metallica fan myself, but it's not because of the thrash stuff only. It's the fact that they went against the grain and kind of did what they want to do, you know? And I think bands should really be doing more and more of that. I, I totally agree with it. Exactly. And because like in the end of the day, 
I always have the mentality of what's the worst thing that could happen because you can do something. And if it doesn't work out, if you don't want to continue, you can always do something else afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't know why it's such a big kind of issue that if something doesn't work out, then you're going to be like, you're going to be down in the dumps and you can't continue. It's like, then just try again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in that being said, then, and because like you mentioned before, like it's hard to sort of come up with some really, truly fresh and original ideas. I mean, do you find it difficult or do you think this is kind of kind of natural to go into sort of different directions and stuff? Well, I mean, to be honest, I think it's just uh, it's a it's a byproduct of, of the music that I listen to, because at the moment, like what I'd have on a playlist, you know, it'll go from it'll go from the classic stuff to to Lady Gaga's, to Nine Inch Nails, mm. to, to My Chemical Romance, to Dima Borgia and everything in between. And I feel like that's definitely one of the one of the positive things that I have going for me because that's already kind of allowing myself to get so much influence from different places, from different extremes. And when you put those together, then it's usually you're gonna come up with something that's not totally conventional and possibly something that people haven't heard with. But, you know, for me, like I said earlier, it still has to have the, the the whole natural side it's like i don't want to get into writing a record where i where i consciously tell myself i need to do something more like that or more like that it's like when i pick up a guitar and i start doing something usually what comes out is what we're going to be doing for the next you know couple of years yeah. and at the moment it's like you know messing with with the electronic stuff on it and it's messing with the melodies messing with just better solos than ever and it's just like because i feel like a band should never in a sense be like you know 100 percent ready i mm. feel like they'll always get new things they'll pick up on new things they'll observe new things especially for a band that gets to see the world you know tour different countries see different cultures and everything it's like you never know what little things you'll pick up yeah no i totally agree with that um do you think as well like sort of doing a lot of shows in different countries and places like that uh do you use that as a, a sort of source of inspiration or influence at all hundred percent, hundred percent. Cause uh, you know, first of all, like doing festival shows abroad is, is always great because you'll see a wide variety of different bands, but then doing, you know, club shows in different continents and different countries, you're going to see different kinds of crowd reactions. You're going to kind of get into the heads of some people with, okay, like this kind of rhythmic stuff works here, that kind of stuff works here. And it, it's like, it's not something that you necessarily actively think about when you're writing, but everything is in the back of your head everything you've ever seen and everything you've ever gone through is somehow inside your head and you're not you may not be consciously using those when you write but it is there still yeah yeah that makes sense um so what kind of feedback i mean you, you mentioned before about you know how some people have been saying you know kind of went down the metallica route or whatever but outside of that i mean has the general response been pretty positive for the new single so far it's been fantastic, honestly. It's it's blown us away. And and I feel like the reason for that also is because I feel like people sense the genuine uh the de genuine grasp of what we're doing with this record and they they uh they catch the storyline you know they read the lyrics they know what's going on and and we've been super super happy with the response i have to say and uh we've been doing the three singles live also mm -hmm. and the reactions for those songs have have been more than we could have ever expected you know when you have when you're playing a new song and by the second chorus you have people singing it then you know that you're <laughs> onto something <laughs> yeah definitely no i mean that's where it's at isn't it like the, the real true response is like at the live show you know seeing the people's faces right there and then i mean i guess you could say i mean do you consider yourself to be more of a live band than a studio band uh 100 percent, yeah because i love creating and i love recording but when we get out when we get unleashed on stage it is a different world it's mm -hmm. a it's like a complete different world yes um what's uh i mean with all the shows that you've done over the years what sort of stands out for you like what's been the sort of highlight or craziest moment you've ever sort of experienced wow well honestly there's the, there's always the first one that comes to mind is is uh at that time it was our biggest show and actually till this day it was one of the biggest shows we played which was loud park in 2013 in japan because uh, oh, wow. it was it was one of our first shows abroad and it was just massive because we played at around 10 30 in the morning and we were like okay you know we're expecting a few hundred people or whatever <laughs> we got on stage and there was about four thousand people completely ready to go at it wow. and you know that was for us because that was the first time we saw such a different place than what we mm. were used to 
And, um, you know, so that's definitely stayed in our hearts for a long time. But one that I have to mention is one of the, the kind of bucket list items that we got off this summer just a couple of weeks ago, which was Watkin. We did oh. that for the first time, which, of course, you know, for any metal band and for any uh, metal enthusiast, of course, it's just one of those things that you can't wait to get to play it if you get yeah. to play it one day. And, uh, yeah, the, our time was this, uh, this summer, and it was just fantastic, absolutely fantastic, a great crowd great show and everything just uh it couldn't have been a better way of starting our walk-in history <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that place is obviously an institution i mean everyone in the world knows that place that that venue that show you know and uh for a band exactly. like yourselves to actually be playing it um that must be a, an awesome feeling to have it is absolutely. And uh, it was just one of those things that it was like we were all super nervous about it. We didn't know how much crowd there'll be or whatever. Mm. Got up there and it just like it, it just like it was one of those things where like every time we get up on stage, in a way we we change like the person that we are just changes into this alter ego who just, you know, starts just going absolutely crazy. And it's just in our it's in our nature. It's like it's not something we ever anticipate or anything it's just when we get on stage and we start playing our music to even mm. one person or you know a thousand people or a million yeah. people it kind of takes over us but you know getting to walk in knowing that we're there having about ten thousand people in front of us it was just it was crazier than any of us could have ever anticipated so that being said then uh for the future uh what is it that you haven't done yet did you want to do Wow. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of places and there's a lot of festivals. I mean, first of all, there's a whole continent that we haven't seen yet and we can't wait to, uh, to see <laughs> everything around the world. But I mean, like Australia is, is one of the places that, you know, it's been it's been a long time coming. And unfortunately, like the, fa the, 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 the sad fact is that obviously it's a hard place to get to. Mm, but yeah. I'm very positive uh, in thinking that in the, you know, within the next couple of years, it will definitely be something that we'll, that we'll be able to do. And cause you know, we've done Japan so many times, which is so close. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, we hope we can finally make that, that last flight and, uh, and finally come out there. Oh no. Well, uh, we'll look forward to hopefully seeing you down here in the future. I mean, we're always embracing new bands and stuff like that. I mean, as I said, um, I don't know, uh, how much of a market you have in Australia, but I, for one, uh, have been a fan of you guys for, for a long time. So I'd love to see you down here, to be honest. <laughs> Amazing. I really hope we can make it happen as soon as possible. Yeah, cool. Um, so what next now? I mean, obviously you've got a lot of touring, you know, now that things are sort of starting to get back after COVID and stuff like that, uh, I guess a lot of just touring for the next uh, year or so. Absolutely. Uh, now we're, we're actually prepping tomorrow. We're going to be going to, uh, to France to do our last festival last festival for this summer and then we have a week off then we're going for almost five weeks we're going to be touring europe and the uk with our with our buddies in blind channel and uh from finland also so we're going to be doing that and then immediately when we come back to finland the record's going to be fully out worldwide and we're going to be doing a, a very extensive finnish tour it's going to be 11 dates around the country and then for the rest of the year we'll be doing a few shows but we're mainly focusing on next year and what I've told our manager and our agents and everyone is I've just said, I've seen the inside of my house. Now, please keep me on the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think everyone sort of has the same feeling, you know, everyone wants to get out of the house and just, you know, hit the road hard, you know, so. I Absolutely. hundred percent, hundred percent. Awesome, man. Well, uh, congratulations on the new album. Uh, it's killer stuff. I love it. You know, it's different, but you know, nothing wrong with different, you know? So, and um, thanks for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man.